<laughs> the seals, Peter. <laughs> Look, they're going swimming. They're sea lions, not seals. <laughs> These are California sea lions. They have ears. Ages ago, they were land animals. But for some unknown reason, they took to the water. The seal's ancestor, the frogman of World War II, was entirely water-oriented. Seals and sea lions are often confused. To further confuse someone, send them this. To tell them apart, though, you need to know what to look for. Seals and sea lions are both technically seals, in the same way that peaches and spam are both technically food. Most people wouldn't use the word to refer to both. So, to identify a seal, we need to know what we mean by seal. For those new to the topic, seals and sea lions are bag-shaped animals that excel in the water, but quickly stop moving if kept in a container of only water. A sea lion is an animal that looks as if a person had half the parts to make a dog, and when they ran out, zipped it up and threw it into the ocean. Whereas a seal is an animal that looks as if a sea lion was forcibly stuffed inside of another sea lion, and in the process, lost the ability to move. Seals can be found everywhere on the planet Earth, and in some Martian zoos. Actually, not here, or here, or here. They've adapted to live just here. With math, we can show that seals can be found at the intersection of the sea and the land. There are 34 species of seals. Technically seals. But we just want to learn how to distinguish between the general groups. The science of grouping animals is called taxonomy. But please don't report me to any scientists. All the species of seals are grouped in a clade called Pinnipedia. You may have learned about taxonomic levels in a learning institution at some point. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Amen. Clade is none of those. A clade is any group of organisms with some common ancestor. Clades can vary in specificity. You can have a clade of kingdoms or a clade of families. And we have a clade of families we call seals. Well, we call it Pinnipedia. Like Wikipedia. For animals that look like this. Now the reason Pinnipedia isn't just an order is because the order that encompasses it is Carnivora, which also contains these animals. Most of these are not technically seals and thus not technically pinnipeds. The three families that make up Pinnipedia are Otobenidae, Otoriidae, and Phocidae. There are three more families, but they're all dead, so you won't run into them. <clears throat> Probably. Otobenidae used to be a big family until it stopped, and the only one left was the walrus. There's only one species of walrus, the walrus. You know what a walrus is. The sixth most popular W animal ever? Please. If you don't, identifying a walrus is pretty simple. They've got mustaches, made of vibrissi, which is the science word for whiskers. You could also look for tusks, which are just their canine teeth. Both male and female walruses have tusks, and if you've ever seen one without tusks, it's probably very young, very old, or at a zoo. Zoos will often remove their tusks, because the walruses keep scraping their teeth against the concrete enclosures. Makes you wonder how they deal with natural concrete. So we cut them out. And then make them whistle for us. If you see a wild walrus without tusks, it's probably a juvenile under two years old, and its tusks haven't grown enough to show under its upper lip. Older walruses can shed tusks due to sickness, though it's rare for one to lose both. The one species of walrus doesn't live any further south than Alaska. If you see a walrus in the wild anywhere else, call the police before it melts. Most people wouldn't refer to a walrus as a seal, so let's put them over there.
the second pinniped family is Otoriidae, which has nine species of seals and every species of sea lion. 6. The family Otoriidae is broken down into two subfamilies, Arctocephalini, the fur seals, and Otoriini, the sea lions. Every member of Otoriidae is an eared seal, because they have external ear flaps, called pinni. Fur seals and sea lions can be found here, mostly in the southern hemisphere, with four species in the North Pacific. The third pinniped family is named Phocidae, the true seals. There are 18 species of true seals. They get my William Berwin mark of approval. No, wait, seal. These are probably the seals you think about when you think about seals, which must be a lot if you're looking up niche seal videos on YouTube. True seals can be found here and here. Now that's all the pinnipeds. The living ones. Our main three groups are sea lions, fur seals, and true seals. And the walrus is there, but nobody look at him, he'll come over here. This all means fur seals are closer related to sea lions than they are to true seals, which can get confusing when trying to distinguish them all. Seal is a word that can refer to any of them, technically, and even more technically to both fur seals and true seals. So they're all seals, but only some are true seals. This is because scientists enjoy confusing the youth. So we need to focus on distinguishing between the three. On this map, sea lions are in yellow, fur seals are in green, and true seals are in blue. And the walrus is still up top in red. The darker areas are where individual species overlap. To start, true seals are generally found further from the equator than sea lions. If you're near the equator, you're not seeing a true seal. And that's not too helpful in distinguishing an individual animal, though. So let's look for specific traits. Ears are a great place to start. That's a tip for the bedroom and seal research expeditions. Otoriety is called the eared seals because both sea lions and fur seals have visible pinny. Ear flaps. True seals don't have ears. I mean, they do have ears. In the same way that toucans have nostrils. I don't see them. Where is it breathing from? So it's like I always say, if you can see the side of a seal's skull, look for its pinny. That's the best way to tell a true seal apart from the other two. So, which animal is this? This is an eared seal. But, is it a fur seal, or a sea lion? The big difference between the two is, again, in the name. Fur seals are furry. They've got the second thickest coat in the animal kingdom. And while sea lions are called sea lions because the males can grow some thick manes, the rest of their bodies are pretty smooth. They rely more on blubber to keep warm than fur. So if the individual has a notably furry coat, it's more likely a fur seal. This is a fur seal. Underwater, it's even harder to tell the difference with the fur tight against the body. Take a closer look at the head. Sea lions and fur seals have different facial structures. A sea lion will have a longer snout and eyes set farther back. Fur seals have much stouter faces with eyes set closer to their snouts. Arctocephalini, the fur seal subfamily, comes from arctos, meaning bear, and cephalo, meaning head, bear-headed. This is a fur seal. Even so, fur seals and sea lions are the two most commonly confused for each other. Look at this video titled Swimming with Wild South African Sea Lions. Today, I'm heading to Hout Bay to do a little adventure and go swimming with South African sea lions. That's not a sea lion. They're underwater, but look at their heads. Short snouts. The diving company the uploader used on their trip refers to them as Cape Fur Seals, another name for the brown fur seal. You can also tell because Africa doesn't have sea lions. Even when searching online by the species scientific name, you'll find misidentified images. Searching Google for Arctocephalus galapagoensis, the Galapagos fur seal, this image shows up on the first page. But look closely, that's not a fur seal. 
Everything on the source website claims that it is, but compare it next to two other images of a Galapagos fur seal and a Galapagos sea lion. It has a longer snout, and its eyes are set farther back. And even this video, from the BBC Earth's YouTube channel, titled Vicious Fighting Sea Lions. Are they? Let's watch. The bulls must now be on their guard, for the females are becoming sexually available. Lots of these young hopefuls wait in the shallows. One of them thinks he sees an opportunity. No luck, he's not big enough yet. These aren't sea lions. Again, take a look at the facial structure. They've got stout faces. Their eyes are closer to their snouts, and they're furry. They're furry all over. Wait, 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 but the males here look like sea lions. Fur seals and sea lions, most pinnipeds, are sexually dimorphic. The males and the females have visible differences. What we're seeing here is that the males have a raised sagittal crest. That can make a male fur seal look like a sea lion. So we look at the fur. Or, if you can, a female. This video has been up for seven years now. If we go back 28 years to the 1993 documentary that this is from, Life in the Freezer, which is already a tip these aren't sea lions, we see they were filming in South Georgia. 95% of the world's population have landed here on South Georgia. Not that Georgia. Not that Georgia. The South Georgia Islands. Where only one species of eared seal is found. The Antarctic fur seal. These can't be sea lions. Sir David Attenborough calls them fur seals in the full documentary, but nowhere in this clip. And if there's any resource people trust on zoology, it's the BBC Earth. For the seven years this has been up, it has been misinforming people, many of whom probably looked it up to learn about sea lions, or learn the difference between sea lions and fur seals. So, now we know how to distinguish seals from up close. Looking at the head is the best way to distinguish between all three groups, whether it's for pinny or for the facial structure. But let's say you're far away. Because getting close to a seal is my number one tip for getting bitten by a seal. Oh, shit! And touching one violates laws. You're far away. Or you're at home watching a video taken from far away, and just can't see the side of a seal's skull. Take a look at the flippers. If it doesn't have flippers, you're on the wrong video. Eared seals have a very distinct way of walking. They turn their hind flippers around and use them like feet. Feet that evolution has tied together in a cruel 24 million year joke. True seals have a more distinct way of walking, in that they can't. True seals aren't very good at moving, so they sort of have to throw their entire body forward in a vomiting motion. The word for this is galumphing, adapted from an 1871 poem in a book by Lewis Carroll. This is a true seal. If the seal you're looking at isn't moving, it might be dead. If not, listen to it. Hello. <laughs> sea lions and fur seals are very social animals and often territorial. They bark at each other. <laughs> true seals don't bark. When they vocalize, it's more like a series of burps. They also like to slap the water's surface, or themselves. This is because true seals love punishment. Well, also because of the low frequency sounds produced to signal to other seals and because it turns them on. Those generally are the key features to look for when distinguishing true seals from fur seals from sea lions. They form this helpful acronym that we're all going to say aloud in three, two, there are many subtle differences and geographical zones that you can go on to learn to identify the main groups of Pinnipedia and even the individual species. If you're near the equator, you're not seeing a true seal. This is true, except if you're in Hawaii which only has one species of seal, the Hawaiian monk seal, a true seal. There are no fur seals or sea lions found naturally in Hawaii. The African continent, as mentioned before, has a surprising lack of pinnipeds. 
There's one small colony of Mediterranean monk seals, true seals, in northwest Africa. Beyond that, just the brown fur seal found in the south. There are no sea lions found naturally on the African continent. There used to be a third monk seal species in the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, until the introduction of an invasive species ended their 10 million year run. They went extinct in the mid-1900s. The last confirmed sighting, when Sir David Attenborough, was my age. The Mediterranean monk seal is also found in some parts of the Mediterranean Sea, which might be why it's called that. Rarely, though, with them being the most endangered seal species. Left. It's actually quite close, the race between which of the remaining monk seal species we can kill first. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, estimates that there are 632 mature Hawaiian monk seals left, and they keep dying due to the feral cat issue on the islands. Meanwhile, the Mediterranean monk seal species is estimated to only have 450 mature individuals left. If we want them to stop dying, we need policy that limits fishing where they live, since we steal their food and often, by accident, catch them in the nets too. Seals, as mentioned, need air, or... It's also pretty important we protect the spots they breed, like the pupping caves found recently in Cyprus. The Mediterranean monk seals that live there used to be able to breed on the beaches, and then we took the beaches. So now they're forced to use sea caves that are only accessible from underwater. Sometimes they flood and the pups die, and they're completely dark. But the seals don't have much say. They actually don't speak language. Our Hawaiian monk seals need those same protections, and more, since the feral cats on the island spread toxoplasmosis, and it's killing more and more of them. And it would be nice if Noah would stop trying to allow the use of riot ammunition against them. Considering what we know those do to people, I'm not sure this vegetable soup bag of an animal would fare much better. But if we keep doing what we're good at, identifying seals should get a bit easier soon. If you would like to learn the individual ranges of every seal species, the IUCN website displays helpful maps, and is where the data used in this video is sourced from. There will be a link in the description. On to unique physical quirks. If playing with a large red ball, for example, it's a hooded seal, and the ball is made of skin. If covered in big white rings, it's a ribbon seal. If covered in small white rings, it's a ring seal, both true seals. Ring seals are often the species you'll see in those viral Japanese aquarium videos. Very round. There's an even rarer subset of ring seals, the Saima ring seal subspecies, that lives only in Finland's Lake Saima. They have a darker coat than most ring seals, and it's estimated that there's only 190 mature individuals left. The gray seal has a wider, more rounded nose that makes it look even more like a dog. If it has this sort of droopy, protruding proboscis, it's an elephant seal. But there's a northern elephant seal and a southern elephant seal, and they're separated by only everything else. It should be noted that sites like Wikipedia and National Geographic state that there are 33 living seal species, and they might be right soon, but for now there's 34. The Wikipedia Pinnipedia article has left out Arctocephalus australis, the South American fur seal. But at this point where you get into memorizing every species of pinniped, you may as well go for a degree. The US military has a program for that in case they attack us. For now though, let's review our method. We'll work our way through five clips, and while we do, we'll build what's called a dichotomous key. It looks a bit like a cladogram, but it's more of a flowchart for visual identification. A cladogram splits organisms by clade, where every split signifies a common ancestor between two smaller clades. But a dichotomous key splits organisms by their physical differences or other observable traits. You've already got all the tools you need here, so we're going to go through them, but if you'd like to test yourself or play with someone, pause the videos when shown, and choose your answer. Let's go! You've come across a bag-shaped animal that you've identified as a pinniped. The throngs of people around you shout, SEAL, SEAL, but you know better than them. As the self-designated most qualified person here, it's time to get to the bottom of this. You open your eyes even wider, letting in even more light, carrying valuable visual information that you can use to discern the nature of your target. What is this? First thing, is this a walrus? There's no tusks, and the vibrissae on this seal fall short of even a baby walrus. Let's check for pinning. I can't see any 
but we might not be able to make them out. So the other thing that should jump out to you is that this seal isn't walking. It's galumphing. This is a true seal. Phocity. All right, next up. What are these? There's a lot here. First are they walruses. No tusks, no mustaches. It's even harder to make out Penny from this distance. But they're walking. These are eared seals. Otoriety. So are they fur seals or sea lions? They don't look furry, but we're far away. The skull shape is a lot longer, but what tells us more is the sound they're making. That's the bark of a sea lion. Both of these are sea lions. Otoriety. Let's keep going. What are these? No tusks, no mustache, no walrus. We're too far to hear any vocalizations, but we can clearly see Penny and that they're walking. Eared seals, otoriety. Fur seals are sea lions. Their skulls are a lot more stout and their coats are very visibly furry. These are fur seals, arctocephalini. And bonus points to anyone who noticed they're surrounded by snow, which makes it a lot less likely they would be sea lions. Let's make it more difficult. What if you were surrounded by, say, a thousand? What are all these? It is, but it's a check. Time. So if you look carefully, you can see that black that looked like it could be a strap is actually new skin. You've got questions and I've got answers, but first, let's focus on the seals, not the guys with the nets. First of all, they're running. They have Penny, but we don't even need to get close to tell these are eared seals. Otoriety. Also, they're not walruses. No tusks, no mustaches, and we seem to be in a warm beach environment. They're moving pretty quick, so it's hard to focus on a skull shape. They also don't look super furry, but we do see a close-up of the one they catch. They are furry. And to be sure, listen to the sounds they make. <laughs> Those lower growls are vocalizations that fur seals make. These are fur seals, arctocephalini. You didn't need this to figure it out, but if you could hear the accents of the men chasing them, you know we're probably in Southern Africa. So if you look carefully, you can see that black that looked like it could be a strap is actually new skin. Along with the logo, so we know this is Namibia, a country on the western bottom tip of Africa. And there's no sea lions in Africa. This video is of the Ocean Rescue Namibia team cutting fishing line free from the neck of a fur seal. They're awesome. Their channel's in the description. Fishing net pollution is one of the worst issues marine life faces right now. It's called ghost gear because it floats abandoned in the sea, still fishing. Ghost gear makes up around 10% of all marine plastic pollution, as detailed in this 2020 World Wildlife Fund report. And it's one of the most dangerous forms of plastic pollution because fishing nets are designed to kill animals. Okay, last one. What is this? This one's tough. We can't see any penny, and we don't get to see it walk. No vocalizations, no close-ups of the coat. But for those of you with a keen eye, you'll have noticed the mustache. I'm very lucky to have students as observant as you. This is a walrus, Odebenity. And look at that, we've got a whole dichotomous key. 
There are obviously more intricacies between all 34 species. This video is simplified. So if you think I've left something out that should have been included, or I've made a mistake that I've missed, leave a comment or send an email, and I'll add them at the top of the description. Subscribe if you think you'll enjoy more videos like this. So go on, and correct people on the internet that confuse them. Like that kid in the movie at the beginning. Because now, you know how to identify a seal.